Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen with TheBassResource.com. Real quick, I'm going to do a video on how to put uh, properly put line on a spinning reel. Gotten a lot of questions about that. It's something I've wanted to do. So I'm going to sit here and, uh, and try to go over it. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, is show you guys the trick you always hear about. Well, make sure it's going on the spool the same way it's coming off the, you know, the, uh, or on the reel the same way it's coming off the spool. I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? First of all, I'm going to do it backwards so you guys can kind of see this. I'm going to point the rod, I'm going to point the rod away from me. And I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to see which way that the, the, uh, the bale is spinning. And it is spinning counterclockwise. All right? So I want to make sure that the line... I've got some ceiling fans right there. I almost hit one with the rod. I'm going to make sure that the line is coming off of the spool counterclockwise. So I'm going to lay it down on the table. I'm going to pull up on it. I'm going to notice, okay, it's going off, coming off the, the spool clockwise. So all I do is I just flip it over. And I remember, you know, sometimes, depending on the, the brand or depending sometimes, uh, how, however they package it in the, in the factory, sometimes the sticker will be on this side, some on this side, you never know. But anyway, I, right here, to get it to come off counterclockwise, the sticker's up. So I'm gonna lay it down on the table, sticker up. Sometimes it's sticker down, but anyway. I'm gonna lay it down on the table, sticker up, and I'm gonna make sure it's, the sticker stays up during the whole time. If it flips over, I flip it back, all right? Next thing I do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run my line down through all of the guides. The rod I'm using right now is my drop shot rod. I have two of them, I have a seven foot and I have a six foot six. And the reason I have two of them is because I like to guide with a drop shot a lot of times and I'm heading to uh, Lake Lanier in, uh, in Atlanta next week to guide somebody. And, uh, and I'm probably going to be drop shotting in about 25 feet of water and tr catching some really nice uh, spotted bass. And I love spotted bass because they fight like they're two, three pounds heavier than they really are. But, um, all right. Now, next thing is the knot that goes around the spool. Always make sure that you have the, the bail clipped open. Now, if you tie it on, and you realize after you tie it on that the bale is, you know, is, is on the wrong side or you forgot to flip the bale, just take the spool off, flip the, and, uh, take the spool off, flip the bale, and put the spool back on so you don't have to retie your knot to the, to the spool or to the reel. All right, now, so I flip the bale. The knot I'm going to tie, can't remember what it's called, um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie an overhand onto the end of the line. Just a simple overhand knot, single knot. I'll tell you why in just a minute. All right. So I got one knot and I'm gonna clip it off or bite it off right above the knot. So the knot, almost swallowed the fishing line. So the knot is right on the end of the line, okay? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a slip knot which is two overhands in the same direction. So overhand there, come above it, tie another overhand, okay? Pull everything tight. So I've got a loop with a slip knot. Hope you guys can see it, it is fluorocarbon. Um, then I'm gonna re come over here, I'm gonna make sure the line's all lined up coming off of the, the last guide. And I'm gonna put the line over top of the spool and I'm gonna hold it down on the bottom as I pull it tight, okay? And when I pull it tight, that knot that I tied on the end of the line stops at the, at the slip knot. So I don't have any tag line I have to clip off and I don't run the chance of, of actually clipping the line, okay? All right, back to putting the, spool, putting the line on the spool. My sticker is up, so I know it's gonna come off counterclockwise. I know that the reel turns counterclockwise, same, same, okay? And now I'm just gonna load the spool. And with, uh, with fluorocarbon, you tend to burn your fingers. So you gotta go kind of a decent pace, but not too fast. Go too fast, it'll burn your fingers. Um, one of the things I do to my, my fluorocarbon when it's brand new and still on the main spool is I will uh, treat it with what's called uh, line and lure or KVD line and lure. Um, I treat it oh, the night before and I just let it dry in there. And what it is, it's a, it's a line treatment that actually 
will uh, will cause the line to be a little bit more um, UV resistant, so it doesn't break down as fast in the sun, especially fluorocarbon. I mean, it's good for just about anything, any kind of a, a plastic line, but I really like it for fluorocarbon because it uh, it makes it last longer. I did a little uh, experiment just just so I could do it, just because I could do it, and I put 20 pound test fluorocarbon on my uh, jig rod, and I fished it for two and a half years without changing off. And I, you, you guys know me in jig fishing, I always have that jig rod in my hand. So it was a pretty neat thing to watch it last. And I just wanted to, it wasn't for anything commercial or anything else. I just wanted to see how well it worked. And uh, finally I took it off because it was starting to get too cloudy and, and starting to, to get a whole lot of memory and stuff like that. But, uh, but that, that line and lure sure worked well. All right, almost there. Now, the other question people ask is how full do I fill the, how, how, how much line do I put on the spool, or how much is too much? Well, what I do is I'll put it on the spool until I have a, an eighth of an inch, or about an eighth of an inch, from the line to the, to the edge of the spool. That's, that's about as full as I want it. I don't want it any more than that because it'll explode off of there. Now, another trick that I learned several years ago, and it works really good with mono and fluorocarbon and copolymer, is once you get your line on there, go ahead and bite it off or cut it off and put it, clip it to your, uh, your little line keeper that's right here on your spool. Clip it onto there, take your spool off, run some hot tap water in the bathroom sink and put that spool down in that tap water for at least five minutes. And what that'll do is it'll cause your line to gain memory onto the spool. So you don't have that big flare off that you normally would get. That's one of the really cool tricks, and it really does work. I used to do it a lot when it was had when I had uh, was fishing with mono on spinning rods and copolymer, and I'll probably do it with these too. But I'm going fishing here in just a minute. Um, but that's about it. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. No, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Um, but uh, like I always say, visit BassResource.com for the answer to all your questions about bass fishing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, hit the like button if you like this video. I hope it really helped you guys who, who are confused about it. You know, I, was, I spent years confused about it. I used to, um, oh, I did forget something. Holy cow. Is, uh, is as, you're, as you're taking it off the, the spool, as you're winding it on, if you drop your rod to a slack line and it starts to spin up really bad, you're taking it off the wrong direction. That's one of the other tricks. But uh, anyway, uh, you guys have a great day. Enjoy your time on the water and take care.